Hi guys, Jason and Nicole here on the Outer Farm. We're actually on the trial property today. You know, I've got Nicole on the back of the camera. She's on the video for me today. Hey everybody. What you want to do today, guys, is give you an update on the fly control. We tried that natural remedy, um, that first lot we did with just the tea tree oil. And we've had a chance now, we've given it a week of trying the five other oils, the tea tree oil, the eucalyptus oil, the lemongrass, the, the cedar oil, and the citronella oil. Now the feedback from that we got guys is that first lot we tried with just the tea tree oil, it lasted approximately a day. And like I said, it, it's not a control to kill, it's a control to uh, repel. Uh, it, it, they probably repelled 80% of the flies, there's still 20% hanging around, but nowhere near the amount that there was originally. And with the second lot, with those five oils I just mentioned, um, similar numbers guys, it was a lot, there's a lot more roam in the air. So the numbers may have been fewer, but it wasn't a noticeable notice. It did last a day. In the morning, there were flies there, but by lunchtime, they were pretty well, well, from what I can go on, they're pretty well back to where they were. Um, one of the contributing factors though, I think for it only lasting a short time, we've got heavy dews here at the moment, at night time, so I can wake up and the grasses are really wet. So I reckon the dew is rinsing off some of those oils. Um, also, if we had rain, out of that whole week of trial, we had showers for an hour out of one of those days. And within hours afterwards, the flies were back. So it definitely doesn't work when it rains. If you get rain, you've got to go reapply. But did it work? I would say yes. But I'd say the time frame would be day and a half, two days, absolute max for it to work and then you've got to reapply and in our circumstance we were lucky because we're actually back in the yards again today because it's been so hot here when i was cell grazing them i actually made pacific laneways for them to come back up so they could get under the roof of the shelter to get shade and whilst they were in getting shaded we could lock them in here and then we have reapplied those oils otherwise there's no way in the world you could see that first video, it was very hard to apply the oil because I was chasing them around the paddock and that was only a small section. The cells are generally bigger than that. So we, there's no way you can control the flies and effectively walk around and spray them on the animals in a large area. So, but I definitely, have, I definitely say it would have its place, guys. I would say if you've got one or two cows and they're quiet cows, whether they be milkers or just houses, cows you've got around the house, and they're quiet enough to let you go up and spray, yes. But I reckon you'd be applying it two days. But it is the natural alternative. I would 100% say it's natural and it does work if your quiet cows are going to stand there and allow you to apply it. So we've had no other choice, guys. We've got to revert to chemicals now. So because we're moving, they've finished cell grazing here in the two acres. We're moving them next door into two acres. They're, they're going to continue to graze next door in the neighbor's paddock. And I can't be following around spraying them. So. That was the last resort though. What we did find is there is a product called, um, well actually it's not product, the company that makes it is Agri, Agri Dynamic. If you look up that product, there is a control and effectively they're using the same oils, if not a few more than we've been using. So it is, we've been using. So it is oil based essential oils. And there's another product from Crystal Creek, it's called No Fly. But when I've looked into those to order, I couldn't find a seller in Australia. They're all from the United States. So it wouldn't have been here in time to apply for me to move the girls out and have to go out today. So it'd be interesting what they've used as a water repellent. Because if they haven't used a water repellent in those products, as soon as it rains or get a heavy dew, you're going to be reapplying. So I'm assuming they've used, I'm assuming it's going to be heavy oil based. So it actually sticks to their hide when it rains and sort of get some sort of protection. But I'm only surmising that, so that'd be interesting, guys. If you ever anyone wants to have a look at a product, check out those two online, and if you try it, give us some feedback and tell us how long it lasted. Like I mentioned, guys, we try and limit the chemical use where we can, but in circumstances like this, when I finish the grazing, they've got to go next door, and I can't get to them to do the spray, and it's not effective long term. It's good for the domestic if you've got one or two cows, like I mentioned, but if you've got cattle like we've got or even more commercial I'd say from anywhere from five to 
any number above, it's not going to be effective control, guys. So we've had to revert back to chemicals because the flies are bad. And buffalo fly in particular irritates them really bad. It also interrupts their feeding. And if gone, untreated, they can cause sores. And generally, there's this, roughly the facts are saying there's 16% reduction in weight, as in daily weight gains, because they're too busy irritated by the, the flies, trying to remove the flies, it prevents them from eating and they're also getting stressed out. But you must treat it, guys. If it's really bad, those sores, they can become an issue. They actually can create a small parasitic worm on the skin, and that can turn into a lesion and get infected. And that's all from the bites of the buffalo fly. So our numbers are getting up. They're not the point we're getting lesions, but we're not going to take the chance. So the product we're using, guys, is Nucadol 200. So it's an effective control, they're saying, for buffalo fly, lice, mange, and that's on pigs, goats, uh, and horses. So we didn't want to go and get one of those internal, external parasite controls and really dose them with a pour on. We've effectively only want to treat the external parasites. So we're trying to limit the chemicals we're putting in. This is an external parasite control only. So what we'll do now, guys, is we'll round up the cows. We'll bring them in and uh, I'll throw my safety gear on. You just don't want to be doing it with bare skin showing. So I'm going to have you know overalls, gloves and mask and glasses to stop any flow or any mist getting in me, getting in my face or on my skin and then absorbing it. So guys, we'll get back to you. We'll load them in and uh, we'll bring you back when we start the spray. Right, guys, I'm all dressed appropriately to do this spray. So I'll get her in now, guys, and uh, I'll start spraying her for the, for the buffalo fly. Good girl. Good girl. Right, guys, that's it. You sort of want to be keeping away from their eyes, so I just on the top of the forehead, I just put it there and let it run down that forehead just to have that aroda and aroma going around and to just repel the flies from that area. Just definitely don't spray it in their eyes, guys. And also, you want to check the label, guys, because there is a withholding period if you're going to use the meat for slaughter. Make sure you check that withholding period. And if you've got a lactating cow or nanny and you're using that milk for human consumption, just make sure you read it because. Yeah, it's got a withholding period too for the human consumption of the milk. Right, guys, that's probably it. Have a good morning. Have a great afternoon and a terrific evening, guys, wherever you're watching this from, and uh, we'll catch you later.